This is a Boogaboo Chameleon 3, and today we're going to open up the central locking mechanism on this side. So uh, the central locking mechanism has failed on this side of the stroller. I'll demonstrate this by only clicking the button on the opposing side, and you'll see that it moves. Uh, that's because this side has no longer any resistance. Uh, we're going to start by opening up the central locking mechanism, and you're going to want something um, soft under the other side, as it's very easy to dent the metal caps. Okay, uh, most of the time it tends to fail on this right side. Um, sometimes it fails on the left side, but uh, in most cases it is the right side. And my guess for this is number one, more people are right-handed, and number two, and more importantly, there is the brake bar on this side, which people tend to hang bags from. Uh, don't do that to your stroller. What you're gonna need to pry off this cap is screwdrivers, flathead screwdrivers. I'm going to use two today. One of them is thinner for starting the process. One of them is thicker. Um, my way of doing this does create some damage to the plastic right around the cap. Uh, if you go to Boogaboo Repair Guy's Facebook page, somewhere down there, you'll see a picture of people using something flat that they slide underneath and then pry off. But it is with a Chameleon 1 or 2, and the lip is not quite as high on those models. So uh, be aware that you will probably do a little bit of damage to the plastic here, but that's uh, to some extent unavoidable. You're going to want to start with your smaller flathead screwdriver and you're going to stick it underneath and you're going to use a hammer and you're going to start prying this cap and right under the cap is a washer with teeth and you're going to want to try to first get the cap off. So as you start to get the screwdriver in, uh, you're going to want to kind of find the space between that washer and the cap and I'll show you that. Once you get a foothold, you can start to push upwards. want to pull this brake wire and keep it out of the way. Slide then my larger flathead under and continue with that one. And you're just working your way around in order to pry it up. You can also twist it sideways. go. You want to manage to pop it off without damaging this inner gear washer on it uh, unless you have access to more caps. Um, so be careful as you're prying it up and around that you kind of do it evenly from all sides. So you have the cap and you have the second uh, washer with teeth. I guess it's a lock washer of sorts. This one's a little harder to get at. You definitely need to use a thinner screwdriver. You might even need to use one that's thinner than this. Uh, I have opened up this stroller before, so things are not as tight as they would be otherwise. I'm going to get it under the lip of this washer, and this washer will deform as you're getting it off. I'm going to pry it up. Again, you need to be uh, careful to do it from all sides because you don't want this one to break. It's okay if it gets deformed because we'll hammer it flat again before we reapply it after fixing the stroller. Uh, but again, you just don't want it to crack anywhere. I'm getting it up on multiple sides. go. Now it's been removed. Again, we'll hammer this into shape afterwards. And you can see that there is some damage that has occurred with the plastic here. If it's really bad, you can of course use a Dremel and get it to be a bit smooth before you put it all together again. Okay, now we're going to open this up and see what's inside. Okay, opening this up, you're just going to pop off the first part. And what you will inevitably first encounter is that the disc, this is the central locking disc, uh, and these are these two I call them S-hooks. I don't know what they're actually called. These two metal parts. 
but the pegs from the disc have broken off into the hooks. This might have happened with one or two pegs. Um, in any case, it almost inevitably happens with Chameleon 3, that this is one part of the cause. However, with Chameleon 3, you can also have damage to this part and to this part. So, if we're looking in closely at this disc, I'll remove this so that you can see it a little better. If you look at each of these little rectangular notches, you'll see that this one is very worn down. And I'm going to show you some parts now from uh, some other Chameleon 3s. So, this we can maybe look at a little bit closer. This is uh, one that is even more damaged. You can see it, it also has this uh, most common damage which occurs here, which is that the side of the rectangle gets uh, worn down so that it's like at a triangular angle. But if you look down here, you can see that what can also happen in extreme cases is this entire plastic part. It should look like this, but it's broken off entirely. So when you're opening this up, it's not just a matter with Chameleon 3 of looking at the disc. It's a matter of looking at these parts as well. Uh, you also need to look at the inside of this piece. I'll flip it over. And we're going to look in here for signs of damage here or here. And in this case, it looks okay, but I'll show you another one. So. If you look at this one, um, let's see if we can see it on video, maybe on this side, you see here the plastic is cracked, so I can move it, and it can be worse, but uh, the, the common crack when it's this piece that's damaged is that at the bottom of this notch there's a crack that has occurred downwards and at an angle, in this case it's on both, uh, so that's also a piece that you need to look at to see whether it's been damaged. Now the discs, we're gonna also make a video where we uh, DIY uh, a disc and uh, put metal pegs in, but uh, you can actually buy the discs uh, 3D printed. You can go to Shapeways. Uh, there's a guy, he goes by Boogaboo Repair Guy, and he makes a variety of smaller parts for Boogaboo strollers. Uh, you can buy the disc if you don't want to make one yourself. Um, it will be easier. Um, but we will show that in another video uh, in a few moments, probably put it up today or tomorrow on how to make the disc yourself. Um, however, if you have trouble with the other parts, uh, these are not available via uh, 3D printing. And I imagine it's because they're very large and very complex and it's pretty hard for people to make 3D models of them. So as far as I know, it's not possible to get these parts and you'd have to take them off of another stroller. Uh, in which case you need to buy a used stroller uh, on a secondhand market. So, in any case, uh, we're going to now start with the process of uh, making another disc, uh, which we'll put out in another video, and uh, then we'll continue with this. Okay, here we have the disc then that we're going to replace, and this is a home fix disc. We've just made another video, which will also be uploaded, showing you how to do this if you would like to uh, repair your own disc as opposed to purchase one. Uh, with this Chameleon 3, to finish fixing it though, as I said, this piece is damaged and so we're going to have to replace it. So, I'm going to need to drill out this rivet. Uh, use a 5 millimeter drill bit. And you just drill it right out. Pull it right off. It's easier if you pull it this end off first. There we go. Here is another piece that I've taken off of another stroller. And as you can see, it's not damaged on any of these uh, little notches, whereas this one is. These are side specific, by the way. Okay, you're gonna put this piece on then. Easiest if you put it 
onto the tube first and then pull it out, push it in. And then we're going to rivet this back in. I'm just gonna use a pair of pop rivets from either side. Uh, I have done that many times before. I don't really notice any difference really in strength between that and the rivet that goes straight through. It might even be stronger to be honest. Okay, and we're going to reassemble this. I uh, put the spring in first, and then this one has this kind of fancy looking um, uh, gear tooth system. And it might look like it's even all the way around, but it's not actually. This position and this position are different than the others. So you're just gonna twist it and press a little bit in until you find the point at which it can be pushed in. This piece goes on top. With these like flat uh, pokey pegs poking outwards. And that also has one position at which it kind of sits flush with the piece underneath. Okay, we're going to start to reassemble the rest of this mechanism. And it's a bit fiddly. Uh, I recommend that you pull your ha handle up on both sides to the optimum position, then you know they're even on both sides and lock both sides. Uh, at this point, you can use a little bit of spray if you're having trouble. Um, there's a good chance you'll wind up assembling and reassembling this multiple times because it's a very fiddly system and it's hard to get everything to line up properly. So it's gonna go like this. What I just did, there's this little, um, raised area with a hole in the middle and that's where this little head of the wire goes in. And then these two S hooks then go in like this and this and you can depress the folding trigger a little bit and you can see how it functions. Okay, one thing I didn't do yet we have to have prepared and ready. Here is that um, uh, lock washer that I removed. You wanna put it downwards like this and hammer it flat. There we go. Okay, I have that locking washer prepared now. Next thing you're gonna do, if you look at the chassis as a whole, this, uh, undamaged side is now locked in place as you would hold it. You need to depress the folding trigger and pull this more or less so that these line up. And that means you're gonna have to make sure these pull apart and you'll know this is correct. If you reach underneath those two pieces that I showed you before, they should still push in against that spring. If they don't, it means that the front and back ends uh, are not pulled out to their maximum width. So you want that to be pushable and then we're gonna carefully slide this into position. Right. It's important that this was lined up properly and now it's not pushable, there we go. And you're gonna kinda of hold that in that position while you slide this bit in. Okay, and then you're gonna depress the folding trigger on this side and pull it into the lock position. And you're gonna hold this really tightly together. If you, if you can't get it tightly together, it means you probably have to redo it anyway. Now, while you're holding this tightly together, you need something soft down for the other metal cap to rest on so that you don't damage it when you're hammering. Pull the brake line out of the way if it's on this side. It involves a lot of holding at the same time, and it's unfortunately important. Now, 
Now what I usually use is a ratchet that is the right width to go around this and then I hammer the outside of the ratchet. But I didn't bring that with me so I'm going to have to do it old school style with the uh, pair of pliers. I have to reposition myself now while still keeping pressure on this at all times. It's a lot easier if you have the ratchet, like a socket wrench that'll fit right around there, but it'll push this down. But this works too. I'm going to open up my pair of pliers like this and use my arm to hold this down. If you have an assistant, they can of course help you to hold this tight while you position everything. hammering around getting this uh, washer tight on all sides again soccer wrench get a soccer wrench set it's easier there we go and at this point you can test if it worked before you bother with the uh, the rest of it you want to disconnect one side and pull and you want to pull it kind of hard and make sure that it's holding in place if it doesn't if it clicks down that means you have to open it up check your disc check the positioning and try again uh, once you have that functioning properly there also shouldn't be any space between the discs on that side and once you have all of that functioning properly then you can go ahead and put the outer cap on which i'll show you in a moment Okay, the last stage of the process after you have checked that this functions properly and that the discs are all tight together is to put this circular cap back on. And uh, what I tend to use for it is a spoon and a hammer. If you have a rubber mallet, that is even better. But the uh, thing about the spoon is that it holds the shape of the cap. And you just do it until you get it flush. go and again there is uh, some small damage to that plastic you could buffet that out using your Dremel uh, if you care so there you go now it's fixed locks in place if I click in the one side and pull it doesn't pull down and that's how you do the complete repair for uh, fixing the chameleon 3 uh, just one quick note if this outer disc was damaged on yours and you need to replace it I don't have a video yet showing how to do that. Uh, if you need a video, then please leave a comment and we will make one. Uh, but essentially, it's not just drilling out this rivet. You also have to open it up here and detach the uh, metal wire from the top so that you can twist it sideways in order to get it up through this piece. But if that's an issue, leave, leave us a comment and we will make a video in the future. Um, we hope this video has been helpful. If it has been, we ask you to subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. Thank you.